few features of accuracy. One is, you know, are you measuring things and are they the real values? So if I use that instrument to measure one inch, is it really one inch? So that can be dealt with with a calibration and a quality control program. But really the more challenging question is, are the boundary conditions and the supports and like you said, the scaling down of the frame, you know, how does that relate to the real world? That if we take a half scale building and we put it on a shake frame and it's held to the table with a bolted foundation and there's no soil and there are no, you know, all these things are simplified in the lab. Um, how can we guarantee that that's correct? And there are a few approaches to that. Um, one is, is a parallel series of analysis. So in line with these physical tests, there are computer models, there are uh, rational analyses, there are you know, hours and hours and hours of, of desk time, if you will, in the offices of, of confirming and predicting and, and watching these, these numbers. Um, another track would, would go back to the field question that uh, was brought up here, that we would verify um, behavior in the field by going out and looking at, at an item uh, in the field. And I guess the final point I'd make, in, in some cases you're not trying to simulate the exact field condition, you're trying to simulate the design condition. And, and those can be a little different. That if, that if I'm going to design a beam, an assumption I may make in my design model is that it's resting on what we call a simple support, which would affect the, a, a pin and a roller, a pin at one end and a roller at the other. So if that's what my design theory is based on, in a lot of cases I want to run the test to the design assumption, not to the, the real world condition. Um, and we can do that because the design assumptions are are conservative in nature by the way they're designed, so that you would never see a true hemispherical bearing in the real world. You would see a beam sitting on a concrete block, and we know that concrete block is going to resist a little bit of rotation, which is going to help the beam, it's going to make the beam's behavior better. Whereas in the lab, we put that concrete block on a round steel surface, which we know has no contribution to rotation. So we know that the values we're getting in the lab are conservative with when, when they're applied to the field would be the goal of the test. You'd never want an unconservative test. You'd always want to design those assumptions such that, that your results are on the conservative side.